let's take a break from computers for a bit. We took a look at the Variac here in, uh, I believe, the last clip or two ago or whatever. Um, I still need to find a switch for it. It's just been a couple days since I got the thing. And, uh, well, as you saw in there, we, we did get it working with the bulb here. But what about some other stuff, like uh, this Simon Says uh, toy here? Well, it does work. These two bulbs are burned out, but I do know you can replace them. So that's all what we're going to do is replace them. I got to open it up first and see what kind of bulb it is. Everything just lifts off after you take off the four screws. And here's the inside. So very simple. We have a Texas Instruments chip here. And the different buttons and it even looks like they have a spare bulb down in there i was not expecting that that's pretty cool also looking a little closer looks like some of these just aren't screwed in all the way see probably preventing a, a good connection so they're probably still good they just were loose yeah they all are a little bit loose there we go. Here's the buttons. Little plunger, push down. That's cool. Interesting. Of course, we have the batteries underneath here. And there's our spare light bulb. Again, didn't know that they provided one, but that's pretty cool. And we have the little adapter here if you were to use a power adapter. Okay, well, let's see what we can get here. We got the, <clears throat> the bulbs back put on, or put on, uh, you know, secured. And it looks like the middle button is start, well, on is this way. So it's on, and let's see here, we'll do one and skill level one, and uh, let's hit start. Let's just move these out of the way. And... And we must have won, because uh, that was the end of it. Well, we saw that these lights work. This one over here we didn't see light up, because it didn't even give us that option over there. So let's see if it does. Okay, well there, we got one to light up over there. So looks like the bulbs just needed to be screwed back in. Very simple fix. Now, I'm sure these just slide on over the switches. I suppose we can turn this off. And that's underneath. Okay, so we'll get our little buttons kind of set back into place here. And try our best to line all this up. I think I'll need two hands. That was a quick and easy fix, and now it's all back up and running. There have been a couple other things I've picked up the past couple weekends that I don't believe I have shown yet. So let's go ahead and take a look at them. Here, we have some finds from the ReStore. A little while back, they appeared to have received a whole bunch of bulbs from, I don't really know where, I don't know if just a local hardware store or lighting place or something, 
just had a whole back stock of bulbs and they just wanted to get rid of them and they all ended up at the restore. So let's take a look at what I picked up for 50 cents a piece. The first one here is a Superior Life 400 watt metal halide bulb, very standard, nothing too special about it. These two here are 250 watt high pressure sodium bulbs. Don't really have a use for them out here at the moment, nor, well, at work, we have some 400 watt metal halide uh, floodlights. I mean, we could use them there. And uh, one, uh, 250 watt high pressure sodium. I don't have a use for here, but I have some, bul uh, some bulbs. Some fixtures back home that use them. So I picked up two of those. They had a bunch of all these. And then we have some, this is a Satco 100 watt high pressure sodium bulb. Again, 50 cents, who can complain? And the rest of these are 35 watt high pressure sodium bulbs. Now there's two different kinds here. They're all Satco, but what I mean by two different kinds is two different styles of packaging. See, this one's a little, I wanna say older and a little shorter and then this one is newer. Now, the 100 watt one here is the taller package as well. So this 35 watt one doesn't really say anything about where it's made. This one's made in China. I want to say this one's made by a different manufacturer. And of course, we'll take a look at that when we get around to making videos of these bulbs. So I don't remember how many of these there are, but there's a bunch. So here's some more 35 watt ones and some more can never have enough you know especially with can't find it anymore yes well minus the 100 watt one there's uh what seven 35 watt high pressure sodium bulbs perfect and last but not least in this bag we have some 70 watt high pressure sodium bulbs I believe there's four of them. There we go. Four 70 watt high pressure sodium bulbs. And I'm sure these are not the best quality in the world. But you know what? 50 cents. Couldn't pass that up. So that's what I picked up at the restore a couple weekends ago. Let's see what else was found. The Goodwill turned up some amazing bulbs here. GE preheat cfls very cool um these were a little expensive for my taste but uh i picked them up anyway they were four dollars a piece i suppose that's not really that bad of a deal but um these are getting even harder to find nowadays and how many did we find here well there's three and four. Oh come on Five, five preheat fluorescent bulbs. <laughs> okay, whatever. Um, yeah, these are pretty cool, especially the packaging is in amazing condition. They must have been on a shelf somewhere for quite a long time. And I wonder, you know, where? Like, who would have this many of them? They were all at Goodwill. They didn't really have any other bulbs on the shelf at the time. Obviously, Goodwill is not the best place to find stuff like the Restore is. But this was still a really cool find. This one I already took the sticker off of, did my best job to do it so I could keep the package in the best condition possible. But yeah, new old stock, preheat CFL bulbs, totally awesome. After finding these bulbs at the ReStore, I sat on it for a week. I thought about the possibility of just picking them all up. Literally because I have a feeling they're not gonna be around much longer. Uh, not necessarily at the ReStore, but in general. You know, sure, they're still being sold at Home Depot and Lowe's and things like that, but just like everything else is being banned, I'm sure these will be here soon enough. So, I decided to go back and pick up whatever is left of the high-pressure sodium bulbs. Here are the four remaining 250-watt uh, high-pressure sodium bulbs. In fact, there's probably more. Um, we'll get to that when we get there. But there's four of them. Let me move them out of the way here. And 
70 watt high pressure sodium bulbs. Now how deep is this? I don't even remember. But uh, we have plenty of them now. Yeah, I think we have plenty. So, there's 70 watt high pressure sodium bulbs for the end of the world. And you thought we were done. No, we're just getting started. Okay, these are from a different restore. These I picked up while I was in Spokane a couple weekends ago. They were a dollar a piece at their restore. Of course, anytime I find mercury vapor bulbs, I pick them up. A dollar. Can't complain. Okay, now, I'm not a big one to pick up LED bulbs, but these were no longer $5 a piece like they wrote on them. Uh, they had them for 50 cents at the restore. And I thought, hey, 50 cents for an LED uh, circle line tube? No, we're not going to put it in there. That's too beautiful of preheat. But you never know in the future. Might be useful for something. I mean, again, I know my reasoning for a lot of this is 50 cents. Okay, what do we have here? There's four of them. All together. Oh, here's more. What was that? Five? Six? Ah, oh, yes, the metal halide bulbs. They found their way home, too. Uh, I picked up the rest of them. Uh, letting them sit for a week. Of course, some people picked them up. The ones that were gone the most were the metal halide ones. None of the other bulbs were touched. Like, from when I first originally saw it versus when I actually picked these up a week later. And then the week after that, picking up the rest of them. Plus, to be real honest... They need the space. So they were actually quite happy that I uh, uh, got them all. <laughs> Funny enough. So one, four, I was going to say 1,000 watt. No, 400 watt metal halide. And here's four more 70 watt high pressure sodium. And these here are Philips 150 watt high pressure sodium. I don't really have a use for these at the moment. But hey, again, you know. For the day when it comes that you can't get these anymore I will make sure that we will have plenty in the community to share because again if you don't get them now you might not be able to get them in the future and what about future lighting collectors that may want something like this you know if I pick it up now versus somebody picking it up not knowing what it is screwing it into their lamp at home it doesn't work then they throw it away that's a waste if I could pick these up now in all these quantities, at least they'll be preserved for future generations of lighting collectors. We're not done yet. One last item, a box of 30 F20 T12 cool white fluorescent tubes. Again, 50 cents a piece. So what the whole box was like, I don't know, 15, 16 dollars or something, but that's not bad. Let's see what we got. Service, long life guaranteed. Looks like it was made by Philips based on the end caps here. Made in USA and Viro light. So I wonder if it's some type of Econo light, you know, if it does take 20 watts like all the others, or if it takes less than that. We'll have to find out. Somebody already cut open the end of this box and put it on the shelf at the restore. Uh, it looks like they took out the cardboard piece here that was, you know, separating the bulbs. Again, 50 cents a piece. They're not assuming somebody's going to come and buy the whole box like myself. But when you find a deal like this, you pick them up. Especially when in this state there is a tax on every single one of these bulbs. And at the restore, tax has already been paid for because somebody bought it at one point, wherever, and then donated this. So, 50 cents a piece. Good deal. And, I mean, not to mention there's plenty of fixtures that can use these bulbs. As usual, there will definitely be videos of these bulbs coming in the future, but for now, we need to get them stored away up here. There we go. For the most part, they're all stored away. Okay, so we're going to try installing the Intermatic Compressor Defender thingy back here for the heat pump. And I need to figure out what circuit this is. It says 60 amps. And I mean, it looks like it has fuses here. You could probably just take the thing out. Pull on fuses, sure. Let's do it. I mean, it's off, right? On, that means off. Just set that there, I suppose. Um, 
Now this cover has to come off somehow. Let's just set this over here. What are these fuses rated for? 40 amp GE. Okay. Now watching a lot of videos on this thing online, they're all just a box. None of them have these fuses. I'm sure this is just an older, you know, service. I'm sure they painted over this, it looks terrible. That's just how they seem to paint stuff is they're like, let's spray everything. And uh, now it looks terrible. Should have just left it the way it was. Uh, the other evening I was out here, I was trying to get this thing off. I think there's some clips on the bottom that you have to undo or something to that nature. Uh, I'll figure it out. There's a screw here if I would just pay attention. Since there are fuses out there and they're 40 amp, I would assume the only 40 amp breaker in here is probably the one we're looking for. Got the cover off. And I also took the cover off this thing. Boy, it's like a whole computer in there. Um, I put the fuses back in just to see if the little display would light up because it's usually lit up when there's power and there is none. So that's good. And uh, here's our box. So we have uh, a wire here that someone taped up because they must have pinched it or something weird. And well, probably the simplest box you've seen uh, for one of these things. <laughs> um, looks like the blue one is our neutral and maybe it is labeled. Uh, obviously this one is a line, it's coming from that way. And uh, this goes to our unit itself. So we can just kind of tell by process of elimination, which goes where. So we need to install it on the side here. Now this is a plastic box. So hopefully we have some good luck knocking this out. Just tested to be extra sure we have no power and we're good. So now we will knock out the side there. And the knockout is out. Is it perfect? No, but at least the whole outer second one didn't come out too. There it is, installed on the side. The hardest part really was getting the, the washer or the nut on there. I believe this is supposed to be 10 gauge, but uh, they used six. I was like, boy, that's big. But uh, you know, back then it wasn't as expensive as it was today. Now we have these really long wires here and we don't want that. We want them to be as short as possible without any kinks or tight connections, you know, or tight angles or anything like that. So um, these will need to be trimmed and connected into here. Now, I have seen videos online where you can put both of these into the same terminal and some people say don't do that and then some people say you can and then the manufacturer specifically says you can. So. I don't know. We'll see if there's enough room in there because we're already putting in a size six gauge wire in there. Yeah, we'll see. Now, is it best to have a solid copper core and a stranded, whatever it is, aluminum wire in the same connector? No, but they're in there. Okay, we got the wires cut to size or length so they're not too long or too short. And, uh, I just took the whole little screws out uh, just so I can get a better view of what's going on in there. And we'll see if we can fit both of them in there. They're in there and I tried to leave them twisted, but uh, they just won't, you know, cooperate. So whatever, they both fit and uh, hopefully it'll, one of those dropped, but um, hopefully that'll be good enough. I mean, in the instructional video from Intermatic, they say it is, so that's what we're doing. There we go. Uh, I would have cut the one on the right a little shorter, but I didn't want it to have any uh, real tight turns. So I just let it be a little longer to accommodate for that. But it's all wired up. Now we need to focus attention on this thing. The wire on the bottom, according to the schematic, is the 24 volt AC that comes from the thermostat inside. They label it here as Y1, which you normally would find on the thermostat and whatnot. Well, this thing, being the thing it is, doesn't have that. It has a Y, and it's a yellow wire. And if you follow it down, it comes right here, which my assumption is wired to the Y1 on the thermostat inside. And according to this, Y1 is the yellow. I got some wire nuts. I mean, we already have a gray one here, but uh, 
you know, go ahead and take this off. It looks like it's too small of a wire nut, if you ask me. Look at the wire coming out of it. Okay, well, that is off. And uh, now we just need to nicely run this wire along here over to here. And I have some zip ties for that. When I ordered this, I thought the wire would may be too short. Uh, never mind. I'm sorry, but what kind of wiring job even was this? Twist it as long as you can. Got the cord, ran along here nicely. And up in, I have trimmed it, because again, it's just too long. And uh, we will get some of this outer casing off of it and uh, wire it up. I have no idea what this ground wire looking wire is for. Maybe it is for ground, but they didn't have it out in their schematic. So I guess to be safe about it, we're just gonna cut it off so it doesn't touch anything else. All wired up. Now we just gotta put all the covers back on. After blinking for three minutes, like I said in the instructions, we do have a solid green light. And uh, I haven't, it hasn't turned on yet because I literally just turned it all back on, but I'm sure it'll function just fine now. Got a mess of random stuff going on here on the workbench at the moment. But doing some thrifting this weekend has found this old Japanese fluorescent desk lamp for three dollars. Uh, it did work when I plugged it in. I moved the bulbs around. Now it doesn't work. I don't know. It must be some with the bulbs. I mean, they do look pretty used up. But I did get one of the bulbs to light up and not the other. I'm not sure if it has two separate ballasts or if it uses just, uses just one. We'll have to look into that. I found this night light at a Goodwill. It was three dollars. A little much for me, but uh, for one of these older fluorescent ones that does have a ballast, capacitor, and argon starter, that's pretty cool. Also picked up four of these 150 watt metal halide bulbs at the ReStore, 50 cents a piece. Um, I do have a fixture that uses these, and there's one at work that uses them too. So that's a great find for 50 cents. Uh, got this paper cutter here mostly for work we have rolls and rolls of stickers and we've always thought of this being a great option uh, to cut all of them efficiently so this is a really great find it was uh two dollars and fifty cents at the thrift store here's some 35 light uh target christmas light set very cool two dollars for that that's not bad brand new in package it does work so i picked it up and this antenna wire here was $3, a little much again, but I have an old AM radio that also does FM, and it doesn't have an antenna, so I thought I'd give this a try. Uh, this does say 375 ohm on it, and I think FM is 300 ohm. I'm not sure. I don't know much about any of that, but I thought I'd pick it up and at least give it a try before buying a $10 or more one on Amazon, so we'll see how that works. And just other, you know, odds and ends while out and about yesterday. I've already had, you know, the, the tensor lamp here. And this is going to be in another video. Putting it all together, cleaning it up like we've been doing lately. So yeah, just some little finds. So they both work. But you got to hold the bulbs in just the right spot. If I let go, it turns off. So obviously there's... Something with the socket down here. That's where I hear the electricity, you know, the zapping and whatnot. So we'll have to, well, I cleaned it up a little bit already, much better, but uh, still has more cleaning to do. At least we know both the bulbs are good. Picked up this little lamp from Ikea. Whenever they come out with something new and interesting to display a bulb, I always like to pick one of them up as long as it's a reasonable price, and usually their stuff is, to, well, display the bulbs in the collection. So this particular one here is like a uh, silver bowl type thing, and it's in a very small box compared to what it is when it's put together. Also, when I went to Ikea to look for it, I was also amazed at how small it was. The pictures online make it look bigger for some reason, but let's see what it is. Of course, there is some type of manual, and we have one of the pieces here, and another piece right here, and they fit everything in the bottom. That is hilarious. Okay, and there's nothing left in there, so I suppose this has to come out of the bottom here. 
and then the light bulb socket, which is medium base, thank goodness. And then this gets put on there, so uh, we'll do that. And there's our little silver bowl lamp. It'd be neat with a silver bowl bulb inside, as long as the filament can't be seen from in between. It'd kind of make a, a flood probably though. Now, Ikea shows them with those G40 globe bulbs. I'm not sure what I'm gonna put in here yet, but it's just a neat little way to display a bulb. Of course, stopped by the thrift store yesterday and uh, picked up some things here. Some nice vintage Christmas lights with some pretty cool bulbs you might be able to see through there. Now, I didn't take these out of their package. I just kind of could tell, you know, what was in there. There's some nice GEs you can see right there. Some more here at the end. We'll get them out of the box here so we can take a better look. And then this box here is the same brand, but this one's 15. And you can see someone put the bulbs back in their packages for the end of each year. So we'll take out the string here. It does look like 15 bulbs, it is quite short. And then we have the bulbs inside. So this looks like an original package. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, being that it's the same uh, brand. So you have some green ones there. I don't think they're... Oh, wait. They very well might be flashers. Oh, they are. The two green ones are flashers. You can kind of see the bimetallic strip in there. It's very hard to see, but it's in there. And then we have a nice pack of GE here. Outdoor Bright. I wonder if that yellow one is still original or that green one on the end. That's a nice deep green. There's a, a clear and a red. That's definitely not original. Then we have some more here. If I can get them out. Hold on. Here we go. And we have a little blinker. That's pretty neat. Some nice orange ones. What's that? Uh, looks like a, a GE again in the middle there, that clear one. And I do believe when I took these out at the store, these are all blues. That's that beautiful old blue too. At least uh, they look like that. So that's pretty cool. Packages and the belt. I mean, $6, that's not too bad. It would have been nice if it was like three or something, but I'm always looking for a bargain. And then I'll get this strand out of here so we can take a look at the bulbs in it. Here's a strand of 25. Unfortunately, it looks like a lot of them have taken a beating and the filament is falling off, which is really too bad. Um, but very cool. I mean, they must have used some type of spray on their tree uh, to get this kind of sparkly look all over everything. But other than that, it's basically a bigger size of the C7 strands that I have. Of course, these are C9. But yeah, a lot of GEs. The D15s. <clears throat> Here's a nice dark green one. And there's clears. Very random. Let me get an extension cord and we'll try it out. So I actually plugged these in for a second and only half of them lit. And I'm like, well, that's really odd. And then I look closer and I'm like, mmm, that's toasty. <laughs> uh, good thing it didn't uh, throw sparks everywhere. So I think what we're going to do is salvage what we can from this strand and uh, the bulbs that do work and then we'll just get rid of the rest. Move to the garage because the bulbs are just so flaky. Um, but this strand is just in too bad a shape to save any part of it to be real honest. But we did get a nice variety of bulbs out of it. All the ones in the boxes naturally work. And we have the ones that don't. I'm currently testing the flashers. These five work. This one hasn't started flashing yet. And then all these right here work as well. So we have a nice little variety of, of bulbs here. And I looked over the strand. It's in fine shape. It's just a little dirty from, of course, being used outside or something like that. And uh, yeah. C9 Christmas lights. Gotta love the classics. It's been a little while since I have 
found some things at the ReStore, especially fixture-wise. Uh, but I stopped by one this week, and uh, here's what we found. So, the first item here is this vintage PL-style fluorescent fixture. I'm sure you've seen similar things like this around apartment buildings and such. Well, this particular one is a little bit different and is not a standard PL-style light. First off, it has a unique design. It has the kind of prismatic looking refractor here that you would find on like a, a trough fixture that would be in the, a drop ceiling or something, for example, or one of those wraparound fixtures, something like that. It has molded for its cover, very unique. It has a brown finish. And at this restore, some of the things were marked uh, in areas for uh, quicker sale. So this one I ended up getting for 50 cents. This fixture was 50 cents. It wasn't $5. <laughs> 50 cents for this thing. So let's take it off and see what's inside. Yeah, that's not a PL bulb at all, is it? In fact, it's a Panasonic 18 watt FUL warm white bulb uses the same style plug as a circle line bulb, but it clips into the fixture here. Isn't that cool? Have you ever seen anything like that? Now I've seen this style of bulb in 12 watt versions. In fact, I've shown a couple of those adapters and fixtures here on the channel, or the main channel that is. And this is the first time I've seen an 18 watt version of the same type of thing. Well, what is ballasting this? Huh, your standard ballast you would find for a circle line bulb. In fact, it would do one. It says PL type one, or LP, sorry, that's not PL. Anyway, ignore what I just said. It does 12, 14, 15, 19, 20, and 22 watt bulbs. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Pretty basic inside. And again, there's the other end. Uh, the previous owner was nice enough to include the mounting hardware that was with it, so we have that as well. That's a very cool find, a very interesting bulb design they got going on here right before, I'm guessing, you know, PL bulbs took over this particular style of fixture. <clears throat> okay, moving on. This is something I have always wanted. Maybe you've seen these out and about. Um, they're kind of like one of those jelly jar preheat fluorescent fixtures, but this is not preheat nor fluorescent. It's 50 watt high pressure sodium. And if we turn it over, you can see it's a Hubble product. Very cool. The ballast is in there with its igniter, I'm sure. Pick this one up for full price. It's uh, $6, but very worth it. I've always wanted one of these. Now, there's a little set screw here. You, you loosen that up and then this shade screws off. And it's a little bit different here in the back. But this is an awesome find. I don't think it's ever been used. It has its original bulb inside because the bulb does say OEM on it. And that bulb has taken a beating. Um, like it has been dropped and it is very, <laughs> it's not straight. The arc tube's not straight inside of it anymore. It's very angled now. Anyway. Uh, definitely a video of this coming on the main channel soon because this is an awesome find. Moving on again, we have this, this white fixture here. White. Pick this one up for $2.50. Uh, they moved the decimal point over, I think was how it was going or something or another. And uh, yeah, $2.50. For this fixture right here now it's missing the majority of its hardware to put it together it only had one screw that was holding on the refractor here um, but if we take the refractor off we can see inside it is 150 watt metal halide good thing i picked up some of those bulbs recently <laughs> and uh it's definitely a canopy style light with this style of reflector assembly going on in here. And then underneath all of this, if I can find an appropriate way to lift it up, normally this would be screwed onto a plastic housing of all things. This is plastic. This is the only metal piece of the whole thing. Inside, we will find an advanced ballast, 
our capacitor, sorry, you can't see that, and igniter up here in the corner. Okay, if we set that assembly aside, again, I apologize, can't really see much. Uh, we can see this particular one is made by W.F. Harris Lighting. Never heard of them. It's a high power factor, 277 volt fixture. Of course, it's a multi-tap ballast, so we'll just put it back to 120 volt, which it looks like somebody used anyway. It is uh, open here. And I think it may have been used for a short amount of time, or maybe not at all. It is just so clean in here that I'm really thinking it's a new old stock fixture for sure. It's just not, it is wired for, you know, 120 and not uh, 277. But anyway, it is missing the bulb. I'm sure it came out, you know, at some point when it's missing all of its hardware here. But we got some, so that's no big deal. So let me see if I can somehow <laughs> pick this thing up because it is very heavy with that ballast on there. Let's set it back on its home here just so we can set that aside for a moment. Now note inside here, it says uh, mount on metal or concrete only. Interesting. Uh, UV shielded lamps are recommended to avoid premature yellowing of this refractor, I am sure. So yeah, that is a very interesting fixture. Normally, I don't know if I would have picked it up if it was $25, I probably would have left it there. But since it was on sale, decided to pick it up. Pretty cool. Very interesting that it has a plastic housing. Now these three items are awesome. Don't get me wrong. But this next item is something I've n I'd never think I would find. Let me let me bring it back over here. That's not an American design, now is it? No, no, it's not. Pick this fixture up for $18. It had a sale on it as well. It is brand new, as far as I can tell. Never used outside. Well, what is this thing? Definitely has a big uh, area here for the light and the reflector. It is a Thorn Sawn Pack. High pressure sodium, 70 watt. Very, very cool. Just, just look at this design. It is so cool seeing, and well, not only seeing, because it's, it's hard to find, you know, in the wild here in the US, a European style looking fixtures, let alone having one in the collection. This is awesome. This is the cherry on top of all these other amazing things. We have the mounting bar here and the wire coming out of the bottom of the fixture. Now, in Europe, a lot of these fixtures, you just have the wire here, and that gets mounted to an electrical box somewhere. Unlike the American ones here, where these get mounted directly onto a electrical box, this you mount somewhere, and then you put the wire into the electrical box. Now, of course, they have fixtures like this over there, but this is a little more common. Uh, in, in European countries. So this is very, very cool find. So that is the finds of this week. And I am going to go right ahead and start making videos of these fixtures. I am so excited to get into these and share, you know, all the details and putting them together with all of you. There we go. One of them's already in its new home. Fits well there, actually. It's protected and with its low pressure sodium friend right here. So I'm up here on the roof because um, the hook that I was using to hold the sunshade thing up this year was very bent when I took it down, obviously from a lot of stress. So I have a new one here, much bigger, uh, the biggest, beefiest one I could get at Home Depot of a reasonable size for this job. Stainless, so it won't rust and uh, We'll get that installed instead. I've always wanted to put Christmas lights on the house, but with some of the eaves being up way too high, I had to figure out a way to get hooks up there and place the lights. Well, you can get a really long ladder, or you can get up on the roof, and I don't really like any of those options. So we're using our brain today. Here I have one of these extension poles that would normally hold a you know cleaning brush for cobwebs. 
And using the Dremel here, I have cut a small slit in the top of the pole, uh, just small enough to hold one of these hooks in a tight fashion. I have drawn lines on it to see what side is the open side with the longer line there and the back of it here with a line as well. And uh, I might extend that line just to see it better when it's up high, but I just went outside to test it and it works well. So just thought I'd share this unique idea.